guys, we just got to our provincial park site and uh, upon looking around, we found leftover tent pegs and clothesline. And uh, upon my initial disgust at seeing these things left behind, uh, what came to mind was the inspiration for today's video. And that's an automatic fisher set, uh, fisherman set, where we put the line in the water, have it attached to a spring pole. We're gonna improvise these tent pegs as uh, kind of a, uh, a new trigger system using tent pegs and the line from the clothesline. So stick around, let's check it out. See if I'm any, have any luck. So he's, uh, even as I'm uh, staging this video, I uh, came across uh, an empty site. It's uh, across from the, uh, the kids, so I'm able to watch them uh, busy at play. But one of the things, uh, even at this site, I just came across uh, yet another tent peg. So in within my site and the adjoining campsite um, and this site, I've collected five ten pegs, probably about three meters of uh, clothesline and uh, obviously pop cans or, or beer cans uh, are off in the woods but uh, I'm actually going to use the tab as a new trigger mechanism so I'll show you how I'm doing that. So what I'm going to do is lay it on the table for you, uh, the overall concept and then later on try to apply it have a look at what I got. So here's what I found and this is what we have to work with. Basically we have a, a large stick and that's going to represent a spring branch or an engine that we're going to put on the bank. Um, if we don't have one to insert, obviously this one's just a dried one as representation, then we use uh, a very flexible green sapling on the bank's edge. But you can see a rage uh, assortment of very common pegs, uh, assortment of uh, clothesline. Now if this was paracord, we'd actually be able to use the line inside, but this is not. This is much, very similar to a polypropylene or a shoelace and then uh, a beer uh, beer pop can. So what we're going to do is with these items that I've found, I have figured out how to take the common tent peg and with a few quick modifications with a multi-tool, turn it into matching kind of seven sticks um, with the two opposing notches and use these tent pegs as part of my trigger system. Let's have a close-up on how I modified the pegs. So the number seven notch concept is seeing two opposing sticks both at number kind of number seven shape and they would oppose each other like this and under tension the, the two of them sit uh, sit on that notch or that face because these are um, rounded they're not going to work so well okay let's have a look at this setup here is your common tent peg and i've taken my file and f filed down the the hook to be more of a kind of a bit of a sh sharpened edge on there Level on both sides, still square across the top. So that would see see that peg get driven into the ground near shore with your hook facing out into the water. So the water is out to our right and up back on the shore here is an element of a trigger stick or trigger branch, um, perhaps a shrub or a branch that's bent over that's green and flexible and uh, providing that engine for this set of system. Take a second tent peg. Now I drilled out a hole near the top with my knife and this is the end that has the notch down inside the peg. So I took my my file and had to file a groove in the end. Oh, it's very hard to see that. File a groove in the end of the hook. How it works then is this line goes up to your engine, the hook meshes together with the hook on the bank, this line goes out to your fishing line, and the slightest pull from a fish in any weather, cold, rain, wind, that junction of those two mating surfaces is so 
and slick, but at the same time positive under pressure. That's what sets the hook. And then you go out and reel in your catch. Alternatively, you can take this peg with the notch, and I'll do a little bit of a close up here. With this in, in the ground, you can take a uh, kind of a pop can tab, and that catches the the edge of the uh, of that groove. But we put the string away on the back side. And when that's pulled by a fish, it rotates off that groove and, uh, and uh, sets the trigger. Hey guys, well thanks for joining me today. This was always the, the uh, bit of a theoretical lesson we're going to try to put it in practice, albeit it is uh, not, not uh, legal, it is a, for a survival situation only. This was all derived from some, uh, some <coughs> leftover uh, clothesline paracord, some lost and found 10 pegs, and an, an, old, uh, an old can where we use the tab. So again, this is an automatic fish set for uh, leaving and trapping fish overnight uh, in a survival situation where, like most traps, we work in 24 hours a day for you. So we're going to hopefully uh, set it up and give you a kind of a practical demonstration of it, um, but uh, uh, you won't be able to leave it up. Okay, we're on site here. It's a perfect location. We've got uh, a branch nearby a, a river's edge here. It could be a little, little more springy, but uh, this will work for today's purpose. And we've got a nice spot here where we can we can start our set and then off uh, off into the water here with our bait. So first thing we do is uh, stake down our uh, our pig. Nice and secure, and it should be um, nearly nearly straight into the ground. Next, we take our uh, our other seven peg and attach it to our spring branch. Get a shorter piece of string here. Make sure our notch is uh, nice and secure. Lower our spring branch. Okay, you can see our number seven peg is attached here. And now we take a length of uh, cord or, or uh, our fishing line and run it through that eyelet out to the water's edge. Just like that. And this line here is a line going out to the water. Okay, so you can see the pegs engaged in here in the, uh, the opposite number seven configuration. If you want the, the, uh, the peg attached to your spring pole or engine facing outward. So when it is pulled, it springs, springs up, setting the hook, catching the fish. Now this sapling is not near strong enough for that hook setting action, it's just representing what our trap, how our trap would work. So again, pull it down, carefully set those two notches with our other end, whoops, with our other end we would have our hook on here and this could be baited with a small piece of clam, a worm or an insect and again this whole length of line could be a uh, fishing line in fact uh, and not a uh, heavier cordage like this, I'm just using this to demonstrate today. So we'll set our, 
She's got her engine. I'm gonna throw her hook in. There we go. We set her engine, we throw her hook in, and now we wait. So when that fish does come and bite, sets sets off the trigger, hooks the fish, and this trigger, this this fish, the fish on the end will be fighting the resistance of this um, until we come back and release it. Similarly with our other pop can set, pop can tab set, we drop the pop can onto the, the edge of the trigger and run our fishing line from the back side of the tab here across the front and when that's triggered off with the fish biting the line it rolls the tab off and sets the hook again we can play with the sensitivity of this right on the edge and when the fish comes by pulls that tab Triggers off rather quickly, setting the hook. Okay, after a little bit of practice, I have assembled the little bank fishing kit. two hooks and this little sapling is what we're going to use. I'm going to unravel the line and get it out of the way. Step one, tie your spring line to your engine, in this case the sapling. Make sure the sapling or tree you're using springs back to its original position. Step two, pull your trigger down to the ground and locate where you need to put your bottom pick. Next step is to see that your line is free of all, all obstacles and attach your bait to your hooks. Here in Ontario, freshwater clams are very popular in the sandy, sandy soil. You can take these clams, put them against a rock, crack them open with another rock, and use the inside rubbery contents, the rubber foot. Uh, rubbery kind of foot inside to, uh, to use as bait. Works great as live bait. In this case, we're using pieces of clam. Onto the hook. And from here, you can extend this out into the water.
one technique I was using to get the, the line out from shore. to submerge submerge a branch and find the line. This will help keep our lures suspended. There we go. You can see the line's gone off. Move it into the water. Let's see. Oh, yes. Wow, that was pretty cool. We took a bunch of lost and found items from uh, any number of campsites, tent pegs, clothesline, a little bit of fishing line maybe found on the bank, and turned it into an automatic survival situation, automatic fish hook setter to, uh, to work that fishing line 24 hours a day. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the woods. Enjoy your outdoors. Bye for now.